Hi, in this video we're going to continue our discussion of section 14.7, all about apps, uh, relative maxes and mins so far, and we're going to deal with some tricky systems. So instead of starting with a parent function, like a f of x, y, one way to do a bunch of these quick examples would be to just give you the partial derivatives with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So if you feel pretty confident with your algebra, uh, I don't think this one's too bad, you should pause the video now and try it out with all the steps outlined in the last video. Here I go. So three, two, one. We're gonna set both of these equal to zero. Now, because this is not a linear system, because there are squares present, it might be beneficial to just solve for one of the variables. So I'm gonna use this top equation to get the equation that three X squared equals three Y, which of course implies that Y equals X squared. Now that gives me a lot of possibilities, but I don't need to use any of them just yet. Instead, I'm going to combine this with the equation down here and get the equation negative 3x plus 3. Now y is going to get replaced with x squared squared. And you have to be very careful when you do that because it's really easy to just write one of those squares and think you're done. Simplifying this would show that 3x to the fourth minus 3x equals 0. You should factor out a GCF, do not divide by X, that will exclude solutions. And when I factor out the GCF here of 3X, you can find that there are two solutions here, X equals zero and X equals one. So that means there's gonna be at least two critical points. We have to still see what these do for us in terms of our Y values. So if X equals zero and Y equals X squared, then Y equals zero. So there's still only one critical point that has that X value. I'm front loading this, I'm trying to put a flag in this. There are situations where a single X value could give rise to two Y values. The way we solve this one, there's not that potential here. And if X equals one, Y would equal one squared or just one. So now we have two critical points, one, one, and zero, zero. The next thing we want to do is find the second derivatives, which is six X, um, negative three, and Y, Y would be uh, six Y. And all that together would tell me that the second derivative, the Hessian function, is going to be 36 x y minus negative 3 squared and so now we see we have a function that could go negative right it depends on what the x's and y's are so we evaluate this at each of our critical points for 0 0 i'm getting a negative 9 and that means that 0 0 is a saddle point. If the D value, if the Hessian value, if the second derivative operator is ever negative, we automatically know we have a saddle point. And for 1, 1, we get the value um, 27, which is larger than 0. FXX. We still need to check fxx at that point at 1, 1. That's 6, which is also positive. So those together mean that 1, 1, we have generally upward concavity is a relative min. All right. Example 2. The first partial derivative with respect to x is 2x minus 6 minus the square root of y equals 0. Sorry, we're going to set that equal to 0. 
I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. And f sub y is just going to be negative x over 2 root y plus 1. All right, sorry. We're going to set them both equal to 0 and see what happens. Again, there's not an easy way to solve this with elimination. So we're going to go with the substitution method. Because I see root y is in both of these equations, I think I'm going to try to solve for root y. Let's, um, let's use the second equation. It looks like that will produce a simpler situation overall. That would be 1 equals x over 2 root y. And x would be the quantity 2 root y. Since I have a root y here, I'm going to go one step further and again solve for the root y completely because I would like to substitute getting an equation with just x's in it. So combining that with our fx, we would get the equation 2x minus 6 minus x over 2 equals 0. Um, you could mess around with the fractions here. I'm just going to use the classic trick of multiplying by the common denominator to simplify the math in my head. 3x equals 12 and x equals 4. Now, if x equals 4, then root y would be 2 and y would equal 4. So again, the only critical point here is 4 comma 4. And that's in general how this can go. I'm not going to do the second derivative test here. It's just going to get ugly. But you would still just check what kind of concavity you're getting using that uh, determinant, using that Hessian determinant formula we have. Example three. Three y minus two x y minus y squared. Fy is three x minus x squared minus two x y. All right, so I recommend you trying this all the way. See what you can get. Pause the video right now. Try it. Try to find the critical numbers here. Three two, one. We're going to set them both equal to zero. And we see that this is a, a pretty complicated situation. If you had to unpause the video because you were completely stuck, you might notice that both of them have a common factor. That both of them can be solved using a GCF factoring technique. And this is where we're really going to emphasize for this video. I can factor out, we always want to try factoring when we can, a y from the whole fx equation. You could start with the fy equation, but you don't need to. It really won't affect things, it's just a matter of preference. Using the zero product property, the idea that when two things multiply to make zero, one of them has to be zero, we get two equations as a consequence of this. Either y equals 0 or 3 minus 2x minus y equals 0, which is the same as saying that 2x plus y equals 3. Okay, I'm just going to put a pin in that. So we have two options here. This is the situation I've been trying to preview for you, even in the last video. There are two options here. You have to pursue both as far as they go. Now, the easier one is y equals 0. If y equals 0, the fy equation becomes 3x squared minus 3x, sorry, 3x minus x squared minus 0 equals 0 which means that, again, we could factor out a GCF and get this equals 0, which shows that x equals 0 or x equals 3. Okay, I've plugged it into the Fy equation. 
replacing the y there with zero. That's how I got the zero, in case that was too fast. Now, this means that when y equals zero, there were two possible x values. So just from this analysis, we find two critical points, one at zero, zero, and one at, careful with the ordering, three comma zero. We already know the y, we're trying to solve the x. So be very careful with the letters here. Now, the other equation was that, uh, actually I wanna solve it slightly differently, y equals three minus two x. Make sure you're clear how I got that from this equation. You could use this equation too. I don't know why I wrote that one. So I would encourage you to pause the video right now and at least try that. If you were stuck at the beginning, here's a good spot to retry. We're going to substitute this in and see what f sub y becomes. 3, 2, 1. I'm going to get 3x minus x squared minus 2x times 3 minus 2x. And that all still has to equal 0 for them both to be 0. This part will force fx to be 0. This part alone forces this first order with respect to x to be 0. Now we're making sure the second derivative equals 0 and we're getting a quadratic polynomial. So that's 3x minus x squared minus 6x plus 4x squared equals 0. Or if we continue to simplify that, we get 3x squared minus 6x, sorry, minus 3x equals 0. Factor GCF out. x minus 1 equals 0. So we'd have x equals 0 or x equals 1. And again, those are two possible x values. We need to check and see what happens with the y values. If x equals 0, we don't automatically know y like in last case. I don't want to pair it up with this y value. That's what I see students do. This y value is not relevant for this work. So I, when I check x equals 0, I would see that y equals 3, and we get a critical point of 0, 3. When x equals 1, I would see that y equals uh, 3 minus 2, or 1. So I get two more critical points, 0, 3, and 1, 1. So for this one, you'd find four different critical points. All of them need to be checked, but notice there's never any situation where I'm getting three comma one. I don't pair up every X value I get with every Y value I get. Make sure you pay attention to the logical flow here. Now I'd recommend using the second derivative test at this point to find whether these guys are relative maxes, mins, or saddle points. Pause the video now and see what you can do on your own. Three, two, one. So f sub x, x is negative two y. f sub y, y is negative two x. f sub x, y, remember you can do this either way is 3 minus 2x minus 2y. So all that together has us that d of xy is 4xy, positive because it's a negative times a negative, minus the quantity of all this junk squared. Ugly formula, but again, we're not going to try to simplify this formula. We're just going to try to plug in our critical values. Our critical points. So on down the list, 0, 0. I'm going to get d of 0, 0 is going to be negative 9. Careful the algebra, which shows that 0, 0 is a saddle point.
3 comma 0. Okay, I'm going to organize it this way. D of 3 comma 0 is um, 0 minus 9 still. So still negative 9, also a saddle point. I think we can see that as soon as one of them is zero, we're going to get a settle point because this is always going to be a negative number. D of zero comma three is also going to work out to be negative nine. So zero, sorry, three zero is a saddle point. Zero three is a saddle point. Lots of saddle points are this function. And D of one one now finally we're going to get four minus one or three and we can just check the first partial with respect to x and we would get negative two so that together that means that one one is a relative so this means we have concave down behavior and this is a relative max again don't be fooled this first thing, we're just checking if it even has a relative extrema. If that D value is not positive, we don't even have a relative extrema. We just have a saddle or inconclusive. So now let's um, do an example all the way through. So let's start with a function of two variables. This produces surface in three dimensions. And I want you to find the critical points and classify them. That's usually how the directions would be for a question like this. Find the critical points and classify them. You should feel confident that you could do the whole problem on your own now. So please do pause the video, try it out, and see what you get. Three, two, one. All right. So my first step is to find these partial derivatives. With respect to x, I'm getting 2x plus 2xy. With respect to y, I'm getting 10y plus x squared plus 6y squared. We're going to set these equal to 0. And when we do that, we want to use factoring techniques. So because the top one looks easier to factor, that's the one that we're probably gonna set equal to zero first. The top one I see has a very easy GCF to take out. And that leaves us with two possibilities, either X equals zero or one plus Y equals zero, which would be y equals negative 1. So if x equals 0, we're going to use the fy equation and get 10y plus 6y squared. And that would also have to equal 0. Factoring that, probably take a 2y out, get 5 plus 3y equals zero and that shows either y equals zero or negative five thirds. So this gives you two critical points just from this step. Critical points of zero zero, the origin, and critical points of zero comma negative five thirds. I will not use that x value for anything else we do later because it was purely with this x value that we got these two y values. We also won't use these y values when anything comes later necessarily because it was only based on the idea that that x happened. Now if y equals negative one, f sub y becomes negative 10 plus x squared plus six. Um, I'm aware that some students have a bit of a mental issue here 
like a momentary pause saying, wait, how should FY have X squared? It can. These are multivariable functions. FY can have only X's. That's totally okay. And it doesn't normally. Normally it's based on both. But when we're in this plane, this plane that's parallel to the XZ plane, FY doesn't depend on Y anymore. We fixed Y. So if I set this equal to zero, I would get x squared minus four equals zero, which would be x equals two or negative two through either factoring or the square root. And if you use square roots, make sure you notice that you have a positive and negative answer. And so I group both of those x values with that y value. Again, there's no mixing and matching between these two cases. These two cases were distinct. So we have four critical points. If you couldn't get to here on your own, I suggest you pause it again and try the second derivative test to identify or classify these four critical points. The next thing I'm gonna do when you unpause the video is figure out the formula for d of xy which is, of course, based on the second partial derivatives. Three, two, one. The second derivative with respect to x is two plus two y. The second derivative with respect to x and then y, which is the same as if you did y and then x, is two x. And the second derivative with respect to y is 10 plus 12y. All of this gives me that the second derivative test function, the Hessian determinant, if you want to be really fancy, is a rather complicated expression, but not too bad overall, right? It's just a polynomial to plug things in. That's the function we're going to use in conjunction with the second derivative with respect to x, fxx, to classify these four points. Pause the video now and try to classify them. Three, two, one. So, critical point number one, zero, zero. Well, I'll write it this way, d of zero, zero is giving me two times 10 minus zero. So that's a positive number, that's 20. And f x x, the second derivative with respect to x of zero, zero also equals two. I mean, the top's not equal to two, but also equals a positive number. So together, if we have positive uh, Hessian and a positive second derivative with respect to x. We're talking about a concave up situation. We're talking about a relative minimum at zero, zero. The value is given by plugging it into the function where you would also see like value of f of zero, zero equals zero. So the value at that point is the z value, the height of the surface at that point. Um, I'm gonna run out of space, even though I just shrunk it. D of zero comma negative five thirds, the most annoying algebraic one we have to work on here, but it's not altogether too bad. We'd have two plus or two minus 10 thirds because again, just like in Calc 1, your main goal is to find the sine of this, find the SIGN minus zero. And you might notice that this is a product of two negatives minus zero. So this is going to be greater than zero.
and the second derivative evaluated at this point is 2 minus 10 thirds, which we already calculated to be negative. And so we have a relative max because we're talking about roughly a concave down type shape, but still going to be a relative extrema. As soon as the Hessian determinant is positive, you know you have a relative extrema. Relative max at 0, negative 5 thirds. The z value is an ugly fraction at that point. I'm going to go back over here to do the top right of the screen to do the following two critical points, 2 comma negative 1. Now we finally have a non-zero x-coordinate, which means this part could take over. Let's see what we get. I'm getting a 0 minus 4. Sorry, 4 squared, which is less than 0, which means 2 comma negative 1 is the saddle. And then we finally check the Hessian at the other, which is negative 2 comma negative 1, which I'm still going to get a 0 in the Hessian determinant right there minus negative 4 squared, which is still negative. So negative 2 comma negative 1 is also a saddle. Is a saddle point. And that's really all there is to it. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to deal with absolute maxes and absolute mins which is a little more complicated than how it was back in one variable, functions of one variable. But I hope this stuff was understandable. I think the test is not that bad. If you have any trouble, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.